and welcome to another nature workshop. Today we're still learning about caterpillars so get ready to learn some interesting facts. I'm sure you already know that a caterpillar goes through a process called metamorphosis where it spins its own silk into a chrysalis and inside that turns into a butterfly. Now because of this really difficult job caterpillars have to build up a lot of energy so their main job is to eat and eat and eat and you've guessed it eat some more they also have to keep themselves safe from predators one way of doing that is to make themselves lots of bright colors so that they can stay safe and can signal to predators that they are toxic another way is to make themselves look like different things i don't know about you but for some reason this caterpillar makes me think of a sausage dog they might camouflage themselves to look like sticks and they might have lots of hairs on them to make them really unattractive to birds that might eat them. Sometimes they even make themselves look like bird poo or maybe even something like a seed or a feather. There are so many different caterpillars that have adapted in order to keep themselves safe. I like this one though, often they'll have pretend eyes on them. Now they have 12 actual eyes, but here you can see there's two massive eyes that make it look like a bigger creature. So as you can see, there are lots of different types of caterpillars. One reason, like I said, for that is adaptation. The caterpillars have adapted, have made changes so that they're safer in their environment and in their habitat. We make adaptations too as humans. For example, I get a bit of hay fever, so when the flowers are all blooming, it makes me sneeze, it makes my throat a little scratchy, I can adapt because of that. I'm not going to say, right, let's chop down all of these flowers because I'm sneezing. No, I take a bit of medication, sometimes I might just go out at certain times, so I can adapt to that. I can make myself safer in the environment. Sometimes the world around us should adapt though. For example, if you can't hear very well, you can't say that, well actually I'm just going to change my ears so that I can understand the TV more. No, the TV would adapt by maybe having subtitles on the bottom or having someone who's using sign language if that's how you communicate. So there are two different ways of adapting. The person can adapt or the situation around them can adapt. What about you? Have you ever had to make an adaptation, a change to yourself or what you do to make yourself safer or to make things a little easier for you? Do you think you should have changed or do you think the world around you should have adapted and changed? It can be a tricky one. How do we decide which one it should be, whether it's ourselves or whether it's a world around us? Talk about it with your family and let me know what you think. So last week my friend Samantha did some amazing crafts for you all about caterpillars. This week I'm going to test your knowledge a little bit. So we're going to have a true and false quiz. You just have to decide if the fact I'm telling you is true or false. You can maybe pick one side of the room and if you think it's true, run to that side. If you think it's false, run to the other side. Or you could just do thumbs up or thumbs down. If you're not certain, just do wiggly thumbs. Some of these might be tricky. A female butterfly lays her eggs on leaves. Is that true or false? You can pause if you need to. It's true. Butterfly eggs are very tiny and different types of butterflies will still lay eggs in the same pattern. True or false? False. They do it in lots of different ways. Caterpillars have 16 legs. Is that true or false? It's false. They have six real legs and 10 pro legs, which are just pretend. Caterpillars shed their skin about four or five times as they grow. Is that true or false? It's true. A caterpillar turns itself into a crystal. Is that true or false? It's false, they turn into a chrysalis. Are you ready for a three, two, one challenge? Remember you can do it outside in nature or you can do it inside on the internet, through your window or in a book. 
So three, can you find three clues that caterpillars have been there? Now you might not be able to find three caterpillars, so instead look for evidence of caterpillars. Two, can you find two predators of caterpillars? And one, can you think of one way that your neighbourhood, the streets around you or the park around you could adapt to make things safer for people? Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. We've got another little quiz coming up, so get those listening ears switched on. Now, my friend Matt has drawn some amazing butterflies, so I want to show you them, but we're going to test our knowledge because I'm learning about this too. We're going to see if we can work out what the names of these butterflies are. So I'm going to tell you the name and then I'm going to show you some butterflies, see if you can guess which one it is. Here we go. So which one of these is the orange tip? They're all orange, but which one do you think it is? It's this one. Well done if you got it right. How about a comma? A comma butterfly. Which one do you think is the comma? It's this one in the middle. Next one, the painted lady. All of these are beautiful, but which one is the painted lady? It's this one again in the middle there. And the meadow brown. Well, they're pretty much all brownish. Which one could it be? This one. And the ringlet. This is the last one. Which one do you think it is? It's this one over here. Well done if you got any of those right. I've loved learning about caterpillars and butterflies with you. It's hard to talk about one without talking about the other. We'll be learning more about butterflies in a little while, but I hope you have a great time exploring and see you later.